Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. This is episode number 100. And in honor of reaching that number, I thought I would have some fun today and play the Apple II Marathon that we played at Kansas Fest. So let's get started. At Kansas Fest 2019, some things were the same, but there were a few things that changed from last year. For example, there was no bite the bag this year. Instead, Jason Scott ran an Apple II marathon. In the marathon in which I participated, there were five contestants and we were each given nine floppy disks with cryptic hints on the labels as to what we were supposed to do. The goal was to get through all nine discs as quickly as possible and then go on to a final finish round. I thought what I'd do today is go through the games that were part of the original nine as well as the final bonus round and just tell a little bit about each one and then also play through and see how quickly we can get through them. I'll show you the disc first with the hint and see if you can guess what game it is. If you want to play along, I'll have all of the game images in the show notes as well as up on the internet archive so you can go ahead and download them and see if you can actually beat my time. Here's all nine discs that we got to start with. I'll just read them through real quick so you can get some hints going. Dig yourself out of round one, slither to level two, lose to the eagle, buckle that swash to 20, get lamp, complete mission one, learn everything about the disc drive, serve two complete rounds, and get into the cave, no magic. Hmm, I think we already know what some of these are, but let's find out for sure. The first game we're going to try is called Lose to the Eagle, and I'm assuming this is Karateka by Jordan Mechner. Karateka, or Karateka, came out in 1984. Jordan Mechner was inspired to write Karateka when he saw Choplifter by Broderbund, and he realized that games could actually tell a story rather than just being a shoot 'em up. It took him another two years to write the game, but in the end, it turned out to be spectacular. If you want to find out more about Karateka, check out the Kansas Fest 2019 YouTube where Jordan Mechner calls in from France and gives some history behind the game. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer now. So the game said to lose to the eagle and presumably that means I have to fight all the way through until I reach the eagle and then get killed by him. So that means I need to actually beat all these guys and then get into the inner sanctum. We were talking to Jordan Mechner and he was talking about the two player mode that Charles Mangot had developed. And the interesting thing is Jordan wasn't sure how that was gonna work because he was saying that the enemies on this game actually have a slight delay and it's designed so that the player has a chance to see what they're gonna do and react to it. Okay, so I've defeated all the guys on the outside and now I'm gonna go into the temple. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run, and then the eagle should show up and kill me. Okay. So that was 5 minutes and 50 seconds to lose to the eagle. Okay, the next disc that I chose to do is called Slither to Level 2. And I didn't really know what to expect for this. I couldn't think of any game that involved slithering, so I just had to boot the disc up and find out what was on it. And it's Serpentine by David Snyder. 
So David Snyder wrote this in 1982, which coincidentally is the same year that he came out with David's Midnight Magic, the pinball game. All right, let's go ahead and we'll start the timer here. Here we go. So we're the little blue guy there over on the left hand, right hand side. And the goal is to eat the other snakes, but the trick is you have to eat them from the tail, not from the head, otherwise they eat you. So this actually stumped a lot of the people who were doing the marathon because they kept running into the snake's head and getting eaten. I just need to eat this next guy. Good. Okay, so on to level two. So go ahead and stop the timer when I get back there. Good. All right, so two minutes and 32 seconds to get to level two of Serpentine. I'm gonna go ahead and run this on an Apple IIe because of course I actually do know what's on there already. And as you can see in a minute, it's called Get Ready to Know Your Apple IIe. Okay, so this says Know Your Apple IIe. It's by Muse Software, which is kind of interesting because they're also the creators of Castle Wolfenstein and Firebug. Uh, so it's kind of funny that they did these happy learning exercises. We wanna learn all about the disk drive. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the return key. The funny thing is Ken Gagne was one of the contestants on this and he wasn't sure if there was a quiz at the end of it and so he actually went ahead and he read everything on here just in case. The rest of us, since we did this disc later than him, we knew that there wasn't any quiz so we just blasted through and then just slammed on the enter key just like I'm doing now. Okay, don't take discs out and we are done with that. Learn everything about the disc drive. Let's get back to some games. This one says, dig yourself out of round one. So I'm not quite sure what that is. I have my suspicions, but we'll put it in and find out. All right, this is Load Runner by Douglas Smith, copyright 1983. So Doug Smith actually wrote this while he was an architecture student and it turned into one of the more famous games ever. So presumably you just have to finish the first level of Load Runner here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so in Load Runner, you're picking up these gold bricks and the bad guys can also pick them up. You can dig holes to make them get buried and they never actually die, but you can see if you wait long enough, then the hole gets filled in and then they reappear at the top. So, okay, there it is. And you can see once I get the last gold brick, that a ladder appears that goes to the top. And then all I have to do, I gotta wait for him. And I'll just go around here and get to level two. Okay, done. So if you're keeping score at home, I've finished one, two, three, four discs. So I have five left to go in the first round. And this one says, get into the cave, no magic. So I immediately know what this is. This is gonna be the original Colossal Cave adventure. And this is saying that you can't use any magic words to get into the cave. And if you don't know what those words are, I won't spoil it for you, but uh, most of you probably do. So this is the original adventure. Here's the copy that I actually have. So this is Apple Adventure, which was released as part of the Apple Software Bank. Copyright 1980, Apple Computer. Adapted from the original Don Woods fantasy game by Peter Schmuckle, Leonard Barshak. It's interesting, they don't actually mention Will Crowther here. I'm not quite sure why he didn't get any credit and Don Woods got all the credit. Go ahead and we'll start the stopwatch now. So this is a text adventure. It's actually the predecessor to Zork and inspired Zork. Uh, let's see, you're standing at the end of a road for the building, so go building. Okay, we'll light our lamp and we've actually gotten into the cave without using magic. So we will go ahead and stop. Next disc, complete mission one. So when I was playing this at Kansas Fest, I didn't know what to expect from that. Okay, it's by Broderbund Software, copyright 1981 Starcraft, and it is Starblazer written by Tony Suzuki. And start our timer here. 
Mission one, bomb the radar. So we just need to complete mission one. And so we're shooting. Let's see, how do we actually go up and down in this game? Okay, so the problem that I had, along with a lot of other people, is I couldn't remember the controls and how you actually bomb. And the trick is you have to get low enough that your bombs actually come out and you can actually pick up more fuel. That's the, the hard part. So there's, I don't know if I actually got the, oh, okay, so I got the radar. So I completed mission one. So stop, 43 seconds. Okay, six discs down, three to go. This one says serve two complete rounds. When I was playing this at Kansas Fest, I thought maybe it was like a tennis game or something. I didn't really know what it could possibly be. All right, and it turns out it's a game called Tapper by Bally Midway, copyright 1983. We're gonna play with one player. Okay, player one, get ready to serve. All right, so my goal is to serve everyone beers by clicking the button and then letting the beer slide along the table, or root beer if you prefer. So we finished one round, now we gotta do two of them. This is gonna get harder because they're gonna start throwing empties back at me. And I'm gonna have to make sure that those don't fall off the bar. So you can see here, one, two, go down here. I'm not gonna make it. Ah, oh, and it fell off the end. Okay, let's see if we can do better this time. Okay, there we go. Oh, I think I finished. Okay. Okay, so that was Tapper. Bizarre game that I never played as a kid. Seven discs down, two more to go. This one says get lamp. I'm pretty sure that is going to be Zork. But let's just fire it up and find out. Okay, Zork won by Infocom, copyright 1980. This version that I have here actually on disc, I don't actually have the disc itself, but this is the solid gold uh, re-release from 1988. So not quite as valuable as an original Zork. But in this one, the goal is to get the lamp. So let's reset and we will hit start. I almost picked up the joystick. Uh, just for fun, let's open up the mailbox and we will read the leaflet in here. Welcome to Zork, game of adventure, danger, and low cunning. Created by Tim Anderson, Mark Blank, Bruce Daniels, and David Lebling. Inspired by the adventure game, same one we just played earlier. So let's go ahead and we need to get inside the house. So here we are, we're in the trophy room, a battery powered brass lantern, get lamp. Okay, stop. One minute and 26 seconds there. All right, it felt just like Wade from Ready Player One there when I was getting the lamp. The final disc in the series of nine is called Buckle That Swash 220. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be Swashbuckler, which is actually one of my favorite games when I was growing up. Sure enough, Swashbuckler, written by Paul Stevenson, published by Datamost in 1982. Let's go ahead and we'll start the timer here. So Swashbuckler, you move left and right and you lunge. And that's pretty much it. And you're just trying to kill guys. So A is left, D is right, S is to switch direction, L is lunge. One trick, once you've killed a guy, you should just stick out your sword again because he's just gonna reappear. Just like that. Oops, I switched too much. Funny thing was, when we were playing at Kansas Fest, the snakes would come and nobody could remember what the key was for fighting the snakes. I have seven dead right now. So when we get to that, I will tell you. Okay, L again. Okay, here comes the snake. So the key is M. 
And that lowers your sword down to the ground and then you can kill the snakes. So when Jordan Mechner was designing Karateka, he actually looked at the figures in this game and realized that he could make large animated figures. So that was kind of some inspiration for that. Okay, here comes a snake. I'm gonna hit the M key and he'll run into it. And I killed 20, so I'm done. One minute, 46 seconds there. At the end of the first round of the Apple II Marathon, there were only two contestants remaining. It was myself and Ken Gagne, and we had both finished all nine discs. So then we went on to the final challenge. And the clue for that one was rescue all the hostages from the first building. As soon as I heard that, I knew it was Choplifter. Let's go ahead and we'll start our timer here. So the first thing I'm going to do when I start Choplifter is actually make sure that the helicopter is balanced. So you can see it's wavering all over and I'll just use the little trims on the joystick to make sure that it's flying level. And it's worth actually taking the extra time to do this because otherwise it's too hard to control. Choplifter is so interesting because the, the goal of the game is actually not to shoot stuff even though you have to do that to win the game. The goal is to actually rescue the hostages. So for example, here's some here. And the trick is you have to be able to rescue them without actually killing any of them and they can get killed by the tanks or if you land poorly then you can kill them. Uh, later on when the game gets harder there'll be airplanes and mines that come along. Okay, I'm up to eight. Where's the other ones? Okay, there's a tank. There's another guy. So I'll land here. If you're not landed perfectly straight, then uh, you can actually kill them that way as well. Okay, come on. Up to 11. Okay. Problem is you can only carry 16 at a time. There's four houses that each have 16. And when you've rescued all of them, then the game is over. Okay, so I've got all 16. So I can go ahead and go back. And when I'm back at the school, I can let them out. Okay, there they go. I'll wait till they're all inside and happy. Stop. So one minute and 45 seconds to rescue all 16 from the first barracks. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Apple II Marathon that took place at Kansas Fest 2019. I'm also hoping that Jason Scott continues to do this every year as it was a lot of fun. There were five of us that participated, Kate, Derek, myself, Ken Gagney, and Adrian. And Ken and I made it to the final round past the nine discs. In the end, Ken left a man behind in Choplifter and I was able to rescue all 16 before he could get his last man out. I've really enjoyed making all 100 videos over the past few years. Thanks also for getting me to 1,000 subscribers. If you're not currently a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. Also, I have a Patreon. You can look in the show notes and I'll have the link to my Patreon. I also have a t-shirt store, so if you want any retro themed t-shirts like the Oregon Trail Choplifter mashup, feel free to head over to ct6502.org and check out the shirts. Once again, thanks for watching.